Welcome back to WePC. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Samsung Odyssey G9, this absolutely massive 49 inch gaming monitor. Uh, you may have seen Paul do the unboxing, he's behind the lens today. <laughs> there he is. Um, today I'm going to be looking at, uh, well I'll be doing a more comprehensive look at it, uh, taking gaming performance, colour accuracy, picture quality, all those good things, uh, so let's get into it. So, the Samsung Odyssey G9, here it is, um, it's absolutely massive. Um, before we get into the more technical stuff, we're just going to go over some of the basics. Um, from a size point of view, um, the exact dimensions are 1147mm by 363mm by 291mm, that's without the stand, if you add the stand into it, it's 550mm deep, so I mean it's absolutely huge. If you are thinking about investing in one of these things, like we've got a pretty big desk and look, it, it comes out to here, you're going to need a decent sized desk um, to accommodate this thing, but if you do, it looks absolutely stunning. So. Just take that into consideration if you are. So size out of the way, um, I mean this thing looks pretty pretty nice. Um, I will say a few negatives first, um, there's a lot of plastic. The back is uh, predominantly plastic, the stand is plastic. When you, for a moment at this price point, I would have, basically what I'm saying is I would have expected more metal to be used. Um, as we'll go over later when we touch upon the stand, it's not the best thing in the world, but um, I mean, it looks nice, um, it's futuristic, uh, the back looks like Iron Man's armour. It's got RGB on there, even though you can't really see it, but overall, from a, from purely from a looks, I think it looks pretty nice, um, as you can see, uh, it's, and it does add to the immersion. Um, that's one of the big pros with this, with this monitor. But overall design, I'd, I'd probably say a thumbs up, but could have used some better materials. Next up, we've got the panel coating. Uh, as always, um, well, I say as always, on most uh, modern monitors, this one uses a anti-glare in 3H hardness. It does a really good job of mitigating reflections, any sort of ambient light, sunlight. It, it, it does a pretty good job, basically. Um, because it's curved, it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, but nine times out of 10, um, it's pretty much spot on. Yeah, as far as viewing angles go, um, I was pretty impressed really. VA panels aren't normally the best, but on this specific panel, uh, they're pretty good. Uh, they do start to darken after about 40 degrees, but yeah, overall pretty good. Moving on to weight quickly, um, that is a big factor for me. Uh, this thing weighs almost 15 kilograms. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the unboxing video with Paul, but he literally had to get me in to come and help him unbox it and put it together because it's just, it's massive and it, it weighs a lot. It's the sort of monitor that once it's there, you don't really want to be moving it. It's not the sort of thing that you want to be moving around in a busy office every couple of weeks because it's, it's just massive and it's quite cumbersome. So looking at the bezels on this particular monitor, uh, they are quite chunky, 11 mil around the top and sides. Whilst that is, I think that's pretty large, quite chunky, but because this is such a huge monitor, doesn't really take a great deal away from your viewing experience. Uh, the one at the bottom is much more stylish, it is bigger, but because it's got this frame, which has got like a brushed aluminium effect, um, it looks much less, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Doesn't doesn't really take anything away from the viewing experience. Um, it, they, I think they're, they're pretty good for a monitor of this size, basically. Uh, yeah, so let's go into a bit more detail on the stand. It's probably one of my least favorite things about the monitor. Um, I don't know if you can pick that up, but I'm putting hardly any pressure on that. And it's, again, you can see what it's like. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's quite wobbly. Um, if you're an aggressive type or an aggressive gamer and you do a lot and you've, you've got a wobbly desk, this thing will move. I mean, looks wise, I've already said it looks pretty good. Uh, you can move it up and down. Um, you've got a lot of adjustability to play with there. It also tilts back quite a lot as well. Um, you can also tilt it side to side. Does its job. Uh, I just, I just wish it was a, a bit, a bit more rigid. Uh, it just feels like it's a bit, you know, it's like one of those wobbly head things. I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but yeah. 
The only reason why the, the, the stand is like that is because it's, it's such a big monitor. Uh, not only does it weigh 15 kgs, uh, it's 49 inches and it's, uh, it's obviously huge. It's got a 1000R curvature, which is one of the, I think it's one of the best ones we've seen. Most panels of this size are usually 1800R, which just means it's less curved, it's, it's more flat. This thing really does feel like you're hunkered inside of it, uh, especially when you're playing games, which is, we'll go over some of the gameplay later, but when you're playing games, you really do get immersed into, into your virtual world. The curvature is, for me, one of the biggest selling points of this monitor, just because it's, it's you are inside it, it's like a little pod. Uh, inputs can be found at the rear of the panel, like always, uh, and all cables need to be inserted in a vertical fashion. Uh, the Odyssey G9 comes equipped with two USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI 2.0, uh, two display 1.4 ports and an audio jack as well. Uh, it's worth mentioning now just quickly, if you do want to get the most out of this monitor, obviously the 240 hertz refresh rate at max resolution, uh, you are going to have to use the display port 1.4. Um, the HDMI won't cut it, so just something to take note of. Like I said, so you do have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack at the back if you want to use that. It's dead handy if you want to just plug your headphones in, albeit a bit of a nightmare actually trying to find it because, you know, it's huge. Um, if you don't want to go for that and you don't have speakers, this thing does have two little speakers built inside of it. Um, you can control the level on the on-screen display, which we'll go over shortly. Um, and they sound all right. Uh, monitor speakers, they're not great, are they? But good for like notifications if you want to, you know, if you have email notifications or something, anything else, they're pretty pants. The power plug is just a standard kettle plug. You don't have to be messing around with any of the um, power packs that we've seen on other monitors. This one's pretty handy. Um, not surprising though, because I mean, it's like 300 mil deep, so it doesn't really surprise me. Just a kettle plug straight in the back. So moving on to the uh, on-screen display. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. I like what Samsung have done. They've sort of taken the Asus approach. Uh, well, I don't think Asus were the first ones to do it, but uh, they've got like a little joystick. Um, some of the other monitors out there, BenQ are always a nightmare for it. Uh, they've got like five buttons under it, and you just, it's just an absolute nightmare. Uh, just having the one joystick, really easy to navigate. Literally just click it in to open up the menu, press up and down, dead easy. Um, when you're inside the on-screen display, you've got a touch, can you see the monitor there moving? That's just, that's what I'm talking about with the stability. Anyway, on-screen display, um, you've got your game options, your picture options, you can also split the screen with a PIP slash PBP mode. On-screen display, that's just language and display time. You've got your system stuff, which is where you can do your audio. You can change the RGB, you can also do local dimming, which is something we'll touch upon later, which is uh, it's pretty novel for a monitor like this. Support, you can obviously do a diagnostic. On-screen display, pretty happy with it really. Um, it's one of the better ones out there I've used, and it's got a nice design as well. Uh, sometimes they look awful, they're just like this little retro-y thing in the corner. This one actually looks nice, so thumbs up for that Samsung. Right, so we've had a quick look at the G9 in terms of size, shape, design, the stand. We've looked at all that stuff. Now we're gonna go over some of the technical bits. Um, we're first up gonna load up the display cal. This is a colorometer. Uh, it's gonna check color accuracy, luminance, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna run the test and then we're gonna have a look at the uh, results. What it's doing at the moment is it's bringing up different shades of gray and it's checking the luminance. Um, but obviously it's just going up the scale now to the peak brightness. It's also gonna go through some of the color shades, green, red, blue, um, and it's just gonna check the color accuracy. We've just finished the extended test using the display cal. Uh, these are the results, uh, as you can see. Average delta, which is the deviation from true, what we're calling true color, was 1.87, which for an uncalibrated monitor is very good right out of the box. Um, Half of that is to do with the um, quantum dot that it comes equipped with. Um, as far as your white levels go, a little bit high, 6700 kelvins. Um, black point is very good, as you'd expect with a VA panel, 0.06, that's basically perfect. Um, the maximum delta was 4.39, all, all very good um, for out of the box settings. I've, I've done literally nothing to the monitor. So um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna run a quick calibration find the best settings, rerun the test, and see what results we can get that way. So we're starting the calibration process now. 
Uh, the first thing that we normally do is we set the display color up. Um, it's got a reading there of our red, green and blue point, as you can see. Um, with this monitor, if you go into the on-screen display and you set it to custom, you do have the opportunity to change the red, green and blue. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to those settings and we are going to change those until we get as close to true as, as we can get basically. So I'm just moving the blue up slightly. Uh, I basically just moved the blue up to 49 um, and it's, it's pretty much perfect. Uh, the red was set to 53 and the green was set to 49. So you don't really need to change that much, but as you can see the before and after, this is much better now. This is ready to be calibrated. We're gonna set it to 120 candelas. Gamma's gonna be 2.2. We're just gonna set that up for calibration. Okay, so the calibration has come back complete. We've just ran another uh, in more in-depth color test. And as you can see, uh, colors are pretty much perfect. Uh, if you're like a developer, content creation guy, uh, this is gonna be absolutely perfect for you. Uh, the average delta is 0.23, so pretty much perfect. Um, white point, 6,500 Kelvins, exactly what you want. Uh, dark point hasn't changed a great deal, but I mean, you can't really get much lower than 0.06. You can, but there's, your eye can't tell the difference. Um, the, the maximum delta that we saw was 1.62, which if you look at a chart where the eye can start to see the difference, it's after about 2.5, 3. Uh, 1.6, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. That's more than good enough for most content creators. Uh, from a gaming standpoint, it's just going to mean that your colours are very realistic. Um, it's going to give you a better overall experience. Um, dark spots are going to be dark, white spots are going to be white, everything else in the middle is going to be true to what, um, what we class as a realistic colour experience. The next thing we're going to look at is panel uniformity. Uh, this takes colour accuracy and luminance into consideration. Uh, we're going to pull up a 5x5 grid, as you're going to see soon. Move this little uh, device around and it's going to measure how accurate the colours are. It basically how well the backlight pulls through and we'll see the results shortly. I've set it up in a 5x5 five five grid. This splits the screen into 25 segments. Uh, you can measure each one. We always start with the centre square because that's your reference square. So every time I measure a different section now, this is going to reference it off the centre square. I'm going to go around each one of these once that's done, it's going to bring up a report and it's going to tell us how accurate and how uniform the panel is. Okay, so we've finished the panel uniformity test. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty good. Um, to give you a rough idea of what's going on here, you want, basically, perfect monitor would be all green, which means none of the individual cubes deviate far enough from the luminance or the colour. Not going to go too technical on that, but basically you're looking for green and the majority of it is green. Uh, we've got a few around the corners, which is to be expected. Um, they usually falter a little bit in terms of the brightness. Uh, this one's a little bit low. The center cube, 270 candelas, a bit higher than what we would normally test, but we've gone with that anyway for this particular test. Uh, this is 9% lower than what it should be. Everything else is within about 5%, which is really good. So just before we dive into some of the games, uh, I decided to load up um, Nvidia's Pendulum Test um, just to see how it performed really. And we've just come across a bit of an issue. So we can't seem to get G-Sync enabled. Um, we've got the monitor set to 240 Hertz now and it's in the maximum resolution. Um, after a bit of research, um, basically, if you haven't got a 3080, which we're not running right now, we're running two 2080s. Um, you can only do 120 hertz and get G-Sync running. Um, if you want to get the full um, refresh rate and the benefits of that, you are going to have to run one of the latest series GPUs. So that is worth mentioning. Um, but yeah, so we, but we have run it on 120 hertz. It looks pretty good. Um, yeah, just thought that was worth mentioning. So now we've gone through some of the color accuracy and the panel uniformity. Uh, we are going to go and do some gaming. Um, before we do that, we're just going to have a quick look at the best possible settings that you can have. Um, I've already gone over the colour settings. Uh, if you're not calibrating the monitor, you can use the settings we chose, which were, just to recap quickly, 
Uh, the colours were 53 red, 49 green, 49 blue. That's going to give you a very accurate portrayal or a decent colour recreation. Um, as far as other gaming settings are concerned, um, we're going to go over this in more detail shortly, but you want to set it to 240 hertz. You want to have the, you can have the black equaliser on if you want. Um, we've got it set to 16. That's personal preference, really. Uh, response time, always have that set to fastest. This monitor has a 1ms response time, which is, which is exactly what you want. As far as the picture mode is concerned, we have it set to custom. Uh, we have the brightness on 62, which in fairness is probably a little bit higher. Um, when we were doing uh, our standardized testing, we had it set to 120 candelas, which is much lower than this. One other thing, uh, there is a dynamic brightness feature on there. Um, you want to switch that off. Uh, it just plays with the brightness too much and it is quite noticeable. Even when we were flicking through the menu on Red Dead, which we might try and show you, um, you could see the black levels were just changing just from flicking through the menu. So I'd have dynamic brightness off also. Uh, apart from that, just make sure all your drivers are set properly in the video control panel and you should be good to go and do some gaming. Uh, so we're just playing Red Dead at the moment. Um, gameplay feels really smooth. Um, we've got it set to 240 hertz. Um, adaptive sync is on and so far I'm seeing no screen tear whatsoever. Um, I mean, you'd come to expect that from a 240 hertz monitor anyway, but um, no, it's really nice. Uh, colours look vibrant. Um, everything looks very realistic. Uh, I've not seen any ghosting or inverse ghosting as of yet. Um, it's nice, really nice. Flight Simulator looks absolutely amazing on this specific title. Um, obviously, you've got this huge field of view to play with. Um, you just get immersed into it. It's, it is a great experience. So there you have it, the full rundown of the Samsung Odyssey G9. Um, overall, uh, despite some of the minor flaws that it does come with, one being the stand, uh, the other one, some of the issues that we had trying to get G-Sync working, things like that. Um, apart from that, it's genuinely a really good monitor. Um, for gaming, I had an excellent experience. Uh, thanks to the 1000R curve, I felt really immersed at all times. Uh, colours were vibrant and realistic. Um, overall, I did really enjoy it. The only thing you've got to factor into it really is the price tag, because it is a very expensive monitor. Um, and you do need the right build to run this to the, best of his, to the best of its abilities. If you have all that, you really can't knock this too much. It's a very good monitor. That's it guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you enjoyed the video, remember to drop us a like and drop us a comment in the section below. Uh, if you want to see more videos just like this, uh, they'll be dotted around somewhere, you can click on one of those. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one.